Welcome to episode 10 of Rusted Robot, the game development video tutorials for Unity 5. Today we're going to work on applying damage to the player when the enemy is attacking. We'll begin by adding a health bar. Under Canvas, right click Game UI. Under UI, select Slider. We're going to repurpose this. Go ahead and rename it GUI Life Slider. Set the anchor to top center. Set the X to 0 and the Y to 195. The width will be 300. The height is 40. We'll set the minimum value of our health bar to 0 and the maximum value to 100. We want the player to start with full health, so we're going to drag the slider to 100. Set the background color of the slider to black. Set the fill color to green. There's another object within a slider, it's called a handle. We're not going to need this for a life bar, so go ahead and delete it. And that's it for the GUI part of the life bar. Let's take a look at the enemy. He has two colliders. One's a circle, one's a rectangle. Since our enemy is always crouched or rolling, we can just stick with the circle collider. So uncheck to deactivate the box collider 2D. Set the offset for the circle collider to 0, 0 and set the radius to 0.6. And then notice how the circle now encompasses the entire enemy. Now we're going to tie the health bar to the player. Open up the CS game value script. Change the life percent variable to a float. Let's add a public variable to hold our slider. The type is unityengine.ui.slider. Name it life slider. Let's write a function that lowers the player's health. It can be called by an enemy or anything that does harm to the player. All you have to do is pass in the amount of damage you want done. Public void take damage. We're going to pass in a float called attack damage. And for now, let's just pick away at the life percent. So life percent minus equals attack damage. So depending on the enemy that attacks and how much damage that enemy can do, we'll subtract that amount from the player's health. Now to tie the player's health to the actual UI slider, an update life slider dot value equals life percent. File save all. Minimize this. Now see the new slot for the life slider. Select this and choose GUI life slider. Now let's make an edit to the CS enemy AI script. We're going to add a new float. Public float attack damage equals 0.5F. Every time the enemy collides with the player, we want to call the player's take damage function that we just created. And we want to pass in the new attack damage float that we created here void on collision stay 2d and then pass in collision 2d other if other dot game object dot tag equals equals player other dot game object dot get component CS game values
Take damage. Attack damage. Now everything should be in place to do some damage. Let's save this and minimize. Now we're going to do something familiar. We've done it before. We're going to create a new animation for our robot. So click your robot, go to the animation tab. In this drop down, choose create new clip. I want to save this in the same folder we've been saving all the animations, which I think is standard assets, 2D animations. Name this player death. Find that animation under standard assets, 2D animations. Select it, uncheck loop time, set the frame rate to 12. Now let's find the sprites. So under the sprites folder, find the death animation. Select all of the frames within that. Shift click. Drag them over to the animation tab. And if you play it, you'll see the death animation plays just fine. Go to the animator tab. So something I discovered here, if we alt drag all the way over to the right, we'll see that a new state was created for us already. Let's change this name to death. This happened last time when we were creating the attacking state. I didn't notice it though. So go ahead and delete the duplicate, the old one here that got created automatically since we didn't use it. I go back to our new death state. Right click idle, make transition, select death, then select the transition. We need to leave has exit time unchecked. Fixed duration should be 0.1. Interruption source is current state. Can transition 2 should be unchecked since this is the last animation you'll have. Now let's add a condition for this to trigger the state. Create a new float parameter. We'll name it health. Now go back to the death state transition. Set the parameter to health less than 0 0.01. So this condition we just created will be true when the new health parameter is basically zero. So how do we get that health parameter down to zero? Well, let's tie it into our CS game values. Create a new private variable. It's gonna be an animator, m underscore nm. We'll need to attach the animator on awake, so create a void awake function. M underscore nm equals get component animator. And then we need to update the animation parameter. And we usually do those in the fixed update function. We do that with m underscore nm dot set float. We say the name of the parameter, which is health, and what value we want to set it to, which is life percent. And if you remember, life percent is being changed when the player is being attacked. So save this, minimize. When we play, we should see when the player's health goes down. he'll die. We'll see a couple issues with this though. You'll notice that the player is always being pushed by the enemy. Let's fix that one first. Go to the enemy script.
we'll use the on collision enter 2D function. We'll check if the other dot game object dot tag equals the player. If it does, we'll get the M underscore rigid body 2D dot constraints and we'll set it equal to rigid body constraints 2D dot freeze position X and then put a little bar, a pipe rigid body constraints 2D dot freeze rotation and we'll also want to create void on collision exit 2D it'll be a collision 2D object we'll call other we'll check again if this other object is the player If it is the player, we're going to grab the M underscore rigid body again. Dot constraints. And we'll set it equal to rigid body constraints 2D. Dot freeze rotation. So only the rotation will be frozen this time. This is going to lock the enemy into its position when it's inside of a collision with a player and then when it goes outside it will begin to move again towards the player you'll see that here these are the constraints that I'm setting when you play it you'll notice as soon as you collide the X is locked in and then the Z rotation is always there if we run away The X constraint is no longer there, but the Z obviously still is. And then when it catches up, the X constraint gets locked in again, so then I don't get pushed around. And one more thing to adjust. Go to the Animation tab, select the character. In the drop-down, select the Death animation. And let's actually delete the last frame. Since we're not looping, we don't want the player to stand back up when he dies. Now let's check out all of our work one last time, play the game. Notice we get attacked, our life goes all the way down, we die, we don't get back up, we don't get moved around by the enemy, everything's good. So save the scene, save the project, and in the next video we'll start up on the game over screen.